Okay, let's jump into this area we talked about previously, the demand charges, which are primarily composed of the power factor penalties and the ratchet. And we're going to take these on individually. Now, power factor penalties, I need to do a little bit of explaining here. Let's talk about a typical utility grid. Off to the left, you have the pole, and basically the utility has a wire coming to your facility. Now, the utility, what they're sending you is a sine wave. It's an electric sine wave. Uh, comprised of KVA, kilovolts, amps. It's a perfect sine wave, and when it hits your facility, it does work. And we express work in the terms of KW. Now, if it hits a incandescent light bulb, basically, you know, the KVA equals the KW, and everything is fine. However, if you have a motor in your facility, and it's most likely that you do, the motor is basically rotating based on magnetic energy. And whenever you have magnetic energy, you have something called KVAR. And what that means is kilovolts amps reactive. We're just going to call it the magnetic energy for now. And whenever you have magnetic energy, it basically distorts the KVA a little bit. We call it, it power factor lagging. And basically, it makes the sine wave not perfect. And the utility then has to make a greater sine wave or do more sine wave or more KVA to overcome the lag. Okay, let's look at this in a vector format. As I mentioned before, KW is basically what we're trying to accomplish, and you might think of it like a vector going from left to right. And when we have this KVAR, or the magnetic energy, it's somewhat like a vector pushing us off course. It's as if, if if you were in a river, and the river was flowing from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, that was the current, you know, you would have to swim a longer distance uh, than just straight across the channel. Like if K, KW was the distance across the channel from here to here, and you had this current, you would end up swimming a much longer distance because of, in this case, the magnetic energy. Okay, let's look at this triangle a little closer. The base leg is the KW, and that's the amount of work that needs to be done. The KVAR is basically the magnetic energy that is taking you off course, okay? It's making the utility work harder, which is the hypotenuse, and we call that vector here KVA. We call this angle down here phi, which is our relationship to power factor. If power factor was 100%, the angle phi would be zero. And basically, the KVA that would be supplied, if the angle was zero, would exactly match the KW. So you can see, as the angle gets greater and greater, the utility has to do more and more work on the KVA side to deliver a certain amount of KW. The game with power factor penalties is to maximize your power factor, or at least get it to a level where the utility won't penalize you. If the power factor goes below 80% in most utilities, if this angle is such that the power factor is you know, less than 80, most utilities are going to bill you a special power factor charge, and we want to avoid that. Okay, so just to review, we need this KVAR, this magnetic energy, to basically start the motor. But once we get it started, we want to minimize this KVAR because it is basically making the utility do more work in supplying us KVA. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Consider the before case, which is the diagram on top, and you have a situation where you know, phi is not zero, your power factor is not 100%, let's just say it's around 70, okay, say power factor equals 70, the utility is having to provide a lot of KVA so that you can do a certain amount of work, KW. And what we want to do is install capacitors, which would basically be a, uh, a force, a vector fighting this KVAR, it'd be a vector down, such that in the after scenario, our KVAR 2 is much less than our KVAR 1, and thus, our KVA2 would be much less than our KVA1 to deliver the same amount of work. So KW1 equals KW2. The work is the same, but the amount that the utility has to do is less. This scenario could be power factor equals 90. Now you can see we've gone from a power factor of 70, where the phi angle was large, and we went and converted, installed some capacitors or something, and we end up with a power factor of 90, where the phi angle is much smaller. We might not ever get to power factor equals 100, but if we can just get above whatever the utility penalty level is, that would be great. So that's a quick summary of some of the things that go into computing demand charges. We've talked about power factor penalties. You understand the difference between KVA, KVAR, angle phi, and power factor. And we know that if the power factor is 100%, then phi equals zero. 
If the power factor is less than 100%, then the fee is going to be something greater than zero. Okay, hopefully you can understand this and see the interrelationships to these terms because the idea is to reduce your demand charge by reducing your power factor penalties. We'll catch you in the next section.